all I did was continue the feeling of this hand going straight, but because I'm turning, because I'm using my shoulder to help move that arm, as I'm turning, that, feet, that rotation gives the arm an angle to swing up on. But as I allow my shoulder to turn, because my shoulder is helping move that hand down the line, and now once I'm there and I just continue that feeling while I continue to turn, my hand goes up exactly where I wanted it to. And then all I have to do there is take my wrist and flatten it out at the top. Now what I want to do is show you exactly what this is going to look like from your perspective when you're looking at your hands and the club and the arms as they go back and do this movement. So I've got my hands uh, basically on top of the blue shaft and the club head in line with the black shaft. But if I go a little bit lateral and keep that hand moving down that shaft and you can see the club head tracing that shaft and I just continue this to the top, how little movement there really is. Watch my wrist movement. The entire movement to the top of the swing is that. That's it. From setup where I am here to the top of the swing is literally nothing more than that with the wrist. Let's see that. So I'm going to go back to the top, flatten out that wrist, and I'm just going to bring it down exactly how it was. So now you can see how much my wrist has or has not moved here. And if I undo it, that's all I did. So if we take the club out of the equation, what you're going to be looking at is your wrist just does this. You see how little movement there is? If you start doing a lot of internal rotation of your arm, taking your hand and twisting it a lot, there's really very little movement. Again, if you're trying to feel that things are going straight back and just flattening that wrist at the top, my wrist from, in, from the top of my swing to address is just that movement. That's how little Tiger was moving back then with his hands.